Well, I'm putting out a website ideally today called On the Impossible, as well as my little book on shorting biotech stocks. So you guys will enjoy that, hopefully. I haven't published it yet. Hopefully I can finish it today. No, anybody could understand it. I write very plainly. I think SMCI, as I've been saying, is long, but it's like very choppy. You know, you're going to get bad news, good news. You could be down 20% one day, up 30% the next day. It's just got to be very nimble. I, I've been long and short this stock. I don't know, Rod One. That's what we do here. We, we're long stocks. We're short stocks. That's I don't know if you know anything about what, what investing is, but that's, that is literally what we do. We go long and we go short. There's DJT. When these things open at 8, they go crazy because the I guess the retails gets a chance to trade at 8 o'clock, which is really funny. It's like some massive volatility. I see price going wild, but I also see the price not changing on Interactive, which is crazy. Yeah, backed us up a lot. But a dog buying a dog doesn't make it exciting. Has anyone made money following my stock advice? <laughs> well, I'm going to start with me. <laughs> yeah, markets are tough. You got to be very careful. It's so easy to mess things up. So easy. One or two clicks, all it takes. So you got to be extremely, extremely focused. You lose focus and you make a couple wrong clicks, it's all over. I do. Farming, nothing's changed. Yeah, GPCR could be could be exciting. 1.8 billion market cap with their own GLP-1. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad. You know, it's not going to be Eli Lilly, but I'm covering a little DJT. I, I'm sure it'll go back down, but I'm short and I just want to be able to put some back out higher if it, if it has a little rally, which it probably will. I don't know about much better. <laughs> uh, oh, XTX, this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about him. Short backed? That's a good question. I mean, a stock for stock deal doesn't help anybody, right? You trade your overvalued stock for my overvalued stock. It's just a bunch of paper shuffling. Palantir's decline because it went down 7 Palant Is Palantir buy because it went down 7%? I don't know. It feels like 2021. Stocks, stocks can go up a lot and then go down a little, and it doesn't mean anything. You know, what you have to worry about is long-term earnings and things like that. Oh, I'm so happy. This looks good. It usually doesn't look this good. It usually is. Bond quotes are coming, Facundo. We are programming it as we speak. I don't ever make my own food, no. Mrs. Screlly might do that. I don't think you should pay yourself more than 100K, but inflation has made that a little different, so maybe 200K. Right now, I think I pay myself like 50K or something. Well, I mean, you should own stock in your company and that you could make a billion dollars with that. You don't. You shouldn't be making it in cash because it just messes up your income statement. Well, that's the point of making this. You don't live off 100K in salary. You live off the money you make from starting the company, or hopefully many companies you've started. I would say you need at least 10000 a month F in New York City. Depending on the lifestyle you live, 20000 Could you get away with five? That's probably the lowest possible. If you're living in New York and life's boring? Oh, <laughs> living in New York is very exciting. Well, in New York City, you have access to the biggest and best jobs, the most beautiful women, in the world other than my lovely girlfriend and the best restaurants the best entertainment man dgt is just reversing i thought it would uh have a little bit of a stickier stickier rally but we'll see yeah pizza but it's basically back to its old price so it's not like it's an amazing rally you know it was like 27 to 20 to 27. yeah i i think we'll get back to the 20s Cassava is not profitable. They don't have any revenue. They don't have any products. That's normal in biotech, though. You don't know exactly when cassava will report the results. It can come at any time between now and year end. Yeah, say new. Um, biotech, that's what biotech companies do. You know, you, you have an idea based on some bench research, and drug, you can start a drug company without a drug. Eventually, you have to make a drug, but... When you first start out, I mean, all drugs start somewhere with an idea. 
oh, I think if you stop inflammation, it may help Alzheimer's. That's a pretty good idea. Try it out in mice. Try it out wherever. Uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs I respect. Probably number one is Palmer Lucky. 91,000 Bitcoin. I don't think we're crashing. That's crashing. And I'll show you crashing. I didn't even know Cuban had a podcast. I don't think Cuban's a fraud, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that get over over scrutinized, over analyzed. He's one of them. It's just not that interesting. It's not even worth thinking about. It, whether you got lucky or not, there's so many more interesting entrepreneurs and executives to talk about. He has an attention problem. And anybody that pays attention to him is just feeding into his feeding into his nonsense. Yet yeah, nobody is comparable to Buffett. Buffett's the greatest that ever did it. If he wanted to, would be the first trillionaire. But he was pretty generous with Berkshire Hathaway. He never wanted to go too crazy. Let's hear from him right now. Well, I never really wanted to have Berkshire be the, the biggest company in the world. Uh, it's not what I set out to do. It just happened. <laughs> Me and Charlie, we just, it, it just happened. Uh, you know, we went out uh, and just tried to do our thing. Uh, first value investing, like, like my mentor, Ben. And uh, then we, we branched out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Buffett made more money than anybody ever. That's the first start. He also compounded successfully without ever getting like thrown off his game. So no drawdown. What so he, he gave you the blueprint on how to become very wealthy without tremendous complexity, like, you know, inventing something or whatever. You know, there's no math that Buffett does that's really difficult or anything like that. It's just hard work and discipline. You know, those are very, very big ingredients. Very, very tough. Yeah, between M B Munger and Buffett, they were very ruthless, uh, very careful. And yes, each each time he reached plateaus, he had to he had to pivot a little bit for more scale, which was very, very, very difficult, to say the least. Most other people would have failed to do that. Yeah, MicroStrategy is uh, definitely a uh, a bit of a scam, but he's making a bet. Making a big leveraged long bet on Bitcoin. They can't create value out of nothing. There has to be underlying demand for whatever it is they're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, basically, Cuban, right place, right time, broadcast.com, sold it, could have kept developing it, decided to basically retire from business after that. He's tried and failed so many things since then to make a comeback. But the only thing he's done other than that is the basketball team, his TV show, all of which are basically just like retired capitalism. Yeah, he hasn't innovated in 25 years. Yeah, Shark Tank is just because he was like jealous of Kramer and, and, and Trump's apprentice and stuff like that. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that he's he's in a lesser class. I mean, I know I know lots of people that are more successful than but he's just a no name, you know, when you're a no name like that, you, you get a lot more attention. I mean, you look at anyone who's built a really big company like Jensen, Balmer Gates, people like that. I'm not sure Cuban could have ever, ever be at the top of a company like one of those. It's not easy. Eric Schmidt, you have to have a very interesting temperament, but maybe you could have, I don't know, but the world will never know. He, he, that's the difference between people that take their money off the table in the poker game and then people who keep betting. And Zuckerberg kept betting. He kept growing. Zuckerberg's maybe the GOAT, to be honest. He's still young. Palmer, who did it again and again. Cuban failed again and again. Every time he tried to start a new business, failed. I mean, he invests. I'm not sure what his investing track record is. Yeah. Cost plus drugs is uh, useless. Teal's up there, obviously. Bezos is up there. Bill Ackman's a good investor. I mean, I don't know if I'd put him on the same scale as some of those guys. Dalio as well. I mean, Dalio kind of did really well being a hedge fund entrepreneur, but I wouldn't put him up there with the really big legends. And investing is different from being an entrepreneur. It has more variance. Yes, Steve Cohn too. All those guys are really great at building a hedge fund and investing in it, but hedge funds aren't really businesses. <laughs> they're, they're people. Yeah, I wouldn't be a fanboy of any business person that you admire either. Because, like, generally, those people privately are not what you think they are publicly. I have a, I know a lot of people that know Cuban, and yeah, 
not that many people are really impressed with them. Bro, Cuban's failed at so many things. He tried to make a Snapchat competitor. He, his cost plus drugs thing is going to fail. Like He's basically Trump part two in a lot of ways. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Let's stop talking. Who cares? Uh, value, valuation methods don't change that much. You know, the only times they change is when you have to look at a new paradigm. Like crypto is a good example. And you have to think about, okay, well, what is this? <laughs> How do I value this? Uh, binary options are interesting too. I've been looking at those a bit. AI is also one of these things where it's like, do I revisit my valuation analysis? I didn't know Nebius was public. That's wild. I have no, no idea. I don't know if you got banned or not, YOLO. Who, what's your name in Discord? Yeah, okay, Humphrey, be careful with SMCI. That, that, that's, a, that's a very dangerous, that's a hot tamale. <laughs> Uh, DJT is a, is also a hot tamale. You gotta be prepared. You can't go into a volatile stock with a huge position and then if it goes a dollar against you, get upset. IG is the same, yeah. Martin Scully 15. Ah, uh, it's a short, you know, backed. I don't think backed is a viable publicly traded company, which is probably why they want to merge with another non-viable publicly traded company. Yeah, I don't think the CCO is gonna help Cassava. If I could hire a CCO and that would result in my phase three working, I'd, I'd do that every time. Yeah, 2x leverage isn't that much. You know, I'm just gonna have double the variance. If you're buying boring stocks, that makes sense. If you're buying crazy stocks, then 2x leverage can be a lot. I have pretty high words per minute. Not that that means anything. Having high words per minute doesn't, doesn't help you real much, too much in real life. Just means you spend too much time what on the computer. Film. And maybe you're good with your hands. It all depends. You know, some people need the credibility of the CFA. Some people don't. Some people, it, it, it depends a lot on you and your background. So I can't really give you individualized advice like that, you know? No, um, the hire of a CEO doesn't mean anything. Autofilled. Still not done with the masterpiece. It takes time. It doesn't cost much to hire a CCO. That person was unemployed. You got 100 mil in the bank. You can hire somebody for 100K. <laughs> Yeah, human shorts is going to zero rapidly. I've been through an auditor change, which went fine. Actually, we never changed our auditor. I went through, I've been, well, actually, throughout a lot of, lots of companies over the years, I've been through a lot of auditor changes with companies I've started, companies I've been invested in, companies I've been short, all that stuff. <sighs> Restatements are less so. I've been through one, which was very innocuous. Big restatement like that? Uh, well, we don't even know if there's going to be a restatement. Innocuous means like uh, sometimes you have the, you got the wrong share count to it, an options uh, pool grant or that. I don't know. Yeah, I've never had an issue with accounting uh, in public companies. There is no difference between Oman and OPT. Oman is just the, the old legacy terminal backward compatible. For those of you who have used Bloomberg extensively, OPT is ours. Tell you what, Anthony, you give me a stock pick, okay? has to be a, can't be like some penny stock, okay? You give me a stock pick. If it's up next week from today, I will give you a Goodell subscription. I'm not giving you a lifetime subscription. You know, it's just data costs. We're buying more every day. Uh, let's, let's see if the, if the stock goes up first. All right, pal? You're counting these chickens over here. It's a chicken counter. You got 144.15. Good luck. 14415. I want to short and make sure it stays below. <laughs> Order partially filled. Just to avoid. Order filled. <laughs> Just to avoid the cost. <laughs> Spend 800 million manipulating the market. Just to avoid losing a $50 bet. Screlly down $2.6 billion in an attempt to avoid. <laughs> My face like. <gasps> Can't put a price on principle. That's why we had to find them. This 22 G's. Turned them to 11 G's. All right, all right. That's enough of that. Let's get back to work. I mean, more of the same. Short DJT, short Sava, into it. Been saying is a little overvalued. DJT's been creeping up for the last hour or two. Okay, let's do the following PubMed. Yang Wang 
filament. All right, Wang and filament. Hundred only 177 results. Wonderful. I love looking through these. There's the plus one paper retracted. Retracted, retracted. Erratum, an expression of concern, expression of concern. Probably good to get retracted. Getting retracted is in, in science is like getting arrested in finance or, or I don't know, something like that. It's bad. You don't want that. But you know, just Order like partially in, filled. Just like in the, the legal world, there's lawfare and science too. If you go against the canon, sometimes in science you can get Order partially filled. Order filled. You can get in trouble for going against the canon as well. Oh, it is an ex. Oh. Mm. I know idea is excellent. Hmm. Thoughts on trapping. Lucrative. So this is a Philemon A mutant who survived. Very interesting. Partial or complete loss of Philemon A. Characterized by seizures but normal intelligence. No Alzheimer's? Just a shout out, reminder to subscribe to Godel, godelterminal.com. Try it out for free. There's a free tier. I hope you're on the free tier for six months before you start subscribing uh, or use the free tier for the rest of your life. You know, the free tier is very good. Don't be shy of using the free tier before you decide in a month, two months, five months, a year you want to upgrade. Word. Hello. I will be presenting an overview of Simifilam and the baseline characteristics for Rethink and Refocus two phase three clinical trials of simifilam in mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. On the left, you see that altered filament A links to the alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptor when soluble A-beta-42 binds this receptor from the outside of the cell. It's a femtomolar interaction and the signaling that activates kinases that hyperphosphorylate tau. It, it just, just doesn't make sense. And neuroinflammation. I'm not stressed, it's just so ridiculous. When simifilam binds, have you seen the clinical data? It is like the, some of the worst clinical data in the history of medicine. Look at the the key slide is is uh ah, where is it? This is the key. Like if you can't look at this and not understand that this is the worst clinical trial data ever presented, then I don't know what lesson in statistics or medicine you need. So a call spread is a pretty simple idea. So you take some option, let's say Sava, 30 calls, and you take the 35 calls. And the 30 calls will be more expensive than the 35 calls because they're more in the money, no matter what the price of the stock is. The price could be two. The 30 calls will always be more expensive. But let's assume it's at 30 and the price is, I don't want to say $3. And it doesn't matter what strike or what expert it is. So let's say the 35 calls are, are $1. This is a call spread. So this call spread, if you buy it, costs $2 because you have to pay three and by selling something you get cash, right? So this is a debit of $2. You could also sell this spread, in which case the numbers are reversed and you pick up $2. So it's up to you whether you want to buy the call spread or short the call spread. Just like uh, doing it without the other arm, buying it means you're going long and shorting it means you're going short. So you, you, if you're shorting this call spread, you will get a net credit of $2 and uh, you hope the stock goes down. If you're long the call spread, you have a net debit of $2 um, and you hope the stock goes up. So it's pretty, pretty simple from that perspective. So why is this interesting? Well, let's say the stock, let's do some scenarios. Let's say the stock goes to two. Let's say it's trading exactly at 30 right now. If the stock goes to do, and we're gonna assume you're long the call spread, but just assume, just know that everything I said, you can do the opposite. So, um, so let's assume we're long this. So where do our 30 calls go? Well, they're worthless, right? So we lose, if we're long, we lose the $3 we put down and we gain the $1 from the short call. These are, these calls are worthless too, but we were short them. So call spreads allow you to bound your risk and still use options to make the trade. So in this case, we lose $2. We lose the entire amount we had to put up. 
because all the options are worthless. Okay, what about uh, at, uh, I don't know, 29? It's really the same story, right? All of these calls are worthless. Only after 30 do the calls start being worth something. So let's say at 33, what happens? Well, at 33, the 33 call, a 30 call is worth $3, right? So we actually broke even here. Our 30 call we bought for $3, and it's worth $3. We could exercise, and it's a wash. The 35 call we sold uh, is worth nothing. So we made a dollar selling that call. So we make $1 in this scenario. What happens at 35? Well, this is kind of the optimal and also the peak scenario, where at 35, this call is worth, what, $5? It costs us three, so we make two here. The 35 call is actually worth nothing, right? Because it's at 35, you would not pay for the right to buy something at 35, you could just buy it at 35. So you make a dollar here, so you're now up three. We have three dollars in this scenario. So the call spread, you know, as the price goes up, your profit goes up. What about at 40? Well, at 40, the right to buy stock at 30 is worth ten dollars, but you paid three, so you only make seven. And that'd be great if you knew that was going to happen. You wouldn't even bother with the spread part. You would just buy the calls, but you don't know that's going to happen. So this is a bit of a hedge. And you're short 35 calls. Well, at 40, 35 calls worth five dollars, and you shorted it for one. So you've lost $4. So your payout is now capped at, at three. So if you look at the chart of the payout of buying the call spread, it basically looks something like this. It's capped, it goes up to a certain amount, there's a small linear amount, uh, and then it's capped again. And one of these is sort of um, break even. So break even's kind of like here somewhere. And this is usually the strike, strike price. So depending on how, how much separation there is between these, you'll find that these calls will be very flat, even as the price of the uh, contract goes up. So instead of it being minus three plus one, it'll be something like minus three plus 2.50. And you can only make 50 cents out of that $5 spread. So it's like very tight. So anyway, you know, just a little something about options. You could sell one of these two. Uh, the reason you would do this sometimes is with margin, if you've kept your downside using options instruments, the broker will let you do a lot more stock. And that's the case with a lot of brokers. They'll let you go to town. 